Today in our 2015 Cadillac SRX, we're going to review and install the SMI Stay and Play Dual Supplemental Proportional Braking System, part number SM99251. Here's what our supplemental braking system is going to look like once it's installed. We've got the control unit mounted here at the kick panel. It's our on off switch. Our connection for the monitor light, which will be displayed when the brake pedal is being depressed. Our actuator is attached to the brake pedal. The actuator pulls on the brake to activate the vehicle's braking system. So there's no need to add any additional braking parts. One of the other really nice features about this braking system is it's proportional, which means it'll slow down in proportion to the tow vehicle. Let's go ahead and activate the actuator. As we see, it pulls on the brake pedal, which is going to activate the vehicle brakes. Now, a majority of the remaining portion of our supplemental braking system is installed in the engine compartment, but once it's installed, it does not require any maintenance or adjustment. Now, let's go ahead and show you how to set up your stay and play dual supplemental braking system. We're now ready to go ahead and adjust the control unit to set it up to our tow vehicle. To start, once we're hooked up and have all our electrical connections secured, we'll go ahead and turn on the SMI Stay and Play Duo system. Then while our helper is pressing on the brake on the tow vehicle, we're going to rotate the knob and thumb wheel up until the operating unit stops. Then we'll go an additional eighth inch and lock it down. And now our G-Force controller operating unit is set to the tow vehicle and we're ready to hit the road. Then when we're done towing our vehicle, we'll simply disconnect the monitor light. Boom, it'll be out of our way. Now once we're ready to tow the vehicle, to install the monitor light, we attach it to the mirror, and then just simply hook it up here to our two pole connection. Flip our switch and it's ready to be towed. Now let's go ahead and show you how to install it. To begin our install, we need to find a mounting location for our operating unit. Now when finding a suitable mounting location for the operating unit, it's got to have enough room that we can close the hood and get it into position and secure it safely. For this application, and since it doesn't matter which side is right side up, we're going to turn it over and mount it here to the top of the engine cover. Go ahead and get it into position and then I'll mark the attachment points. Built into the operating unit are four attachment points. We'll mark all four. Then we'll go ahead and pull the operating unit out of the way, set it aside for right now, and remove the engine cover. Now to remove the engine cover, we've got a fastener here that'll have to be taken out. We'll hang on to it, as it will need to be reinstalled. I'm going to remove the oil fill cap. Go ahead and pop the cover up. Put our oil cap back on until we're ready to reinstall it. This will keep any dirt, dust, debris, or anything from dropping down into the engine. Now with the holes marked out, we're going to go ahead and pre-drill them. For each one of our attachment points, we're going to have a bolt and flat washer going up through the attachment point, then through the operating unit where I'll install a nylon lock nut. Let's go ahead and put our hardware in place. Note these fasteners are not supplied with the install kit. Now with my first two on, I'll go ahead and repeat the same process with the other two. And once all our fasteners are in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Once the operating unit is attached to the engine cover, we'll go ahead and remove the oil fill cap again. Put the cover back in place. Make sure it's seated properly 
and reinstall the fastener. Next we need to mount the operating unit. The operating unit needs to sit inside the vehicle with the label facing the passenger side. It also needs to be level and the wires that come out facing the front of the vehicle. Now for this application, the best location to mount it is here on the kick panel. But as you can see, the kick panel dips in towards the firewall. So we're going to create a mounting location that sticks out so that the operating unit can sit here next to our hood release. I'll start by creating a small hole in the kick panel for my hardware. I'll then take my bolt and flat washer and feed it from the back side of the panel out. Now to hold my bolt in place, I'll go ahead and install a nut and tighten it down. Now I'll put on a second nut and set the depth of how far my box will go onto the bolt. We need just enough room to get it through our attachment point of the control unit. Then we'll install a third nut to secure it at the attachment point. Once I have my hardware in place, I'll tighten it down. Once we have our manufactured attachment point here tightened down, holding our box in place, we'll use the self-tapping screw provided with the install kit to secure the rear attachment point. Now we've got a good solid mount for our operating unit. Next we'll locate a manufacturer's grommet so that we can route the wiring through the firewall. Using a drill bit, we'll go ahead and open it up large enough that we'll be able to pass our wiring and airline through the firewall Now we've got our hole through the firewall and we're able to route our wiring from inside to outside the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and set up our monitor light. The monitor light will get attached to the front of our rear view mirror so that it can be viewed from the rear view camera of the tow vehicle. Using the two pole loop wiring harness provided with the install kit, we're going to create a light that's removable when it's not in use. First. We'll take the two pole loop and we're going to cut off the pigtail. I'm offsetting my cut a little bit to accommodate for two butt connectors. Once I have the cuts made, we'll go ahead and strip back both sides and add a butt connector to each. We'll use the blue butt connectors provided with the install kit. Now we've got the butt connectors attached here to the half of our two pole connector. We're going to take it and attach it to the ends of our monitor light. We'll go ahead and match red to red and brown to black. All right, now with our connections made, because they're pretty thin LED wires, I like to go ahead and tape them up, give them a little support and strength. We're also going to use the wire loom right with the install kit to help bundle up our wire and add a little additional protection. To install the wire loom, we'll just take the split or opening in it, slide our wires in, work our way all the way up to the light. Now once I have the wire loom on, I'm going to take a couple pieces of tape, just wrap it around the ends to help hold it in place. Next we'll go ahead and take the hook and loop fasteners attaching one side to the back of our light and the other side to the mirror. Remove the two-way adhesive and just attach directly to the light. 
firmly press that into place, get a good cohesive connection. And then we'll take the other side and attach it to the front side of the rear view mirror. Our light's gonna sit here on the mirror so that it shines through the windshield as visible from the rear view camera. Just like we attached to the light, we'll go ahead and remove the two way adhesive and attach it to the mirror. When installing your hook and loop fastener, make sure you stay away from any sensors that might be part of the rear view mirror. Now with the hook and loop fastener attached to the mirror, let's go ahead and install the light. Now with the pigtail set up for our monitor light, we'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll take the other end of our two pole loop, set its mounting location, and our wire routing. The brown wire is going to get quick splice connected to the black wire coming from the control unit. The red wire would normally be connected to the cold side wire of the brake switch. However, for this application, the brake switch does not have power in the tow mode so it'll need to get routed into the engine compartment and ultimately hook to the breakaway switch wiring harness. Now we'll go ahead and take about six inches of the leftover wire loom and put it on our two pole loop. This will help bundle up our wires. Give us a nice clean install look for the wiring that'll be exposed. Once it's in place, again, we'll go ahead and tape it up just to help hold the wire loom in place. Before I put the two pole wiring harness in place, knowing we've got a Route it all the way in the engine compartment, we're going to go ahead and add to it. I'm just going to take an extra piece of wire and use a blue butt connector and then tape it up. Now we'll go ahead and mount our two pole connector. Slide it into place here and use one of the zip ties provided with our install kit to secure it. We can just zip tie it off to the manufacturer's wiring. This will be where we'll connect the monitor light. Now the brown wire that comes from the two pole gets connected to the black wire coming out of the back of our control unit. To connect these two, we'll use a quick splice connector. I'll go ahead and take the connector, put it onto the black wire, Cut the brown wire to length. Slide it into the quick splice connector and crimp it down. Then we can go ahead and close the clasp on the quick splice connector. Now the remaining portion of our wiring needs to get routed into the engine compartment to help bundle up the wiring as we route it behind the carpeting underneath the dash and over to our pre-drilled hole in the firewall, I'm going to add the half inch wire loom provided with the install kit. I want to have my wire loom in place. I'll go ahead and put some electrical tape on it to help hold it in position. Now with my wire loom in place, we're just going to simply route it behind the carpeting and we can even secure here to the manufacturer's wiring as it runs over to our pre-drilled hole underneath the dash behind the center console. Then I'll go ahead and take my wiring and route through the pre-drilled hole. Now, once we have our wiring pulled through the firewall, you can see the wire loom goes right up to our pre-drilled hole. Next, we're gonna mount the air cylinder. The air cylinder pulls on the brake pedal to actuate the brakes. The clamp bracket will allow us to attach it directly to the brake pedal arm. Our anchor point will get mounted to the firewall and needs to be attached directly to the sheet metal of the firewall. So we'll go ahead and cut away the necessary portion of the carpet and insulation until we get down to the sheet metal. I'm 
once I have the necessary carpet trimmed out, and then do the insulation behind it. Now once we have the insulation moved and we can get directly to the firewall, we need to mount the anchor point. The anchor point is also the adjustment for the cable here by the set screw. Be careful not to over tighten the set screw and fray the cable. Next we're going to go ahead and mount the anchor point to the firewall. Keep in mind you want the cable coming out of the air cylinder in a straight line back to the firewall. To attach the anchor point to the firewall, we'll use a self tapping screw provided with the install kit. Note when attaching your anchor point to the sheet metal, locating an area where the sheet metal doubles or triples up for a good solid attachment point is preferred. Once our anchor point is firmly attached, we can then take the air actuator and secure it to the brake pedal arm. Just using the plate and nuts provided, we'll secure the air cylinder to the parking brake arm. Now as we tighten down our fasteners, we'll make sure we tighten them down evenly. Next, we'll take the air line, provide with their install kit, route it through the firewall and into the engine compartment. We'll reuse the same hole that we pre-drilled in the firewall and ran our wiring through earlier. Next, using our tubing cutter, we're gonna go ahead and cut the end of our line to make sure we've got a clean, square cut on our air line before we put it into the air fitting. The end of our air cylinder is our air fitting. It's a push style fitting. So we'll take the air line, line it up, firmly press it into place, and then pull back to lock it in position. Now to help protect our wiring and air line as it routes up the firewall, we're gonna use the wire loom provided with the install kit. I'll go ahead and put it over the bundle of wires now, which will help secure them and protect them as they route up the firewall. Quick tech tip, if you tape the wires to the airline, it will help with routing through the wire loom. Now with our wire loom in place, we'll go ahead and route the airline and wiring up the firewall. Now we'll move to the top of the engine compartment, take our air line and wiring, pull it up into place. All right, now that we've got everything routed into the engine compartment, we can start making the connections here. We have two wires that are zip tied here to the top of the battery. These are the two for the breakaway switch that were previously installed with our Roadmaster base plate kit, part number 523162-1. We'll go ahead and cut them free and route them to the other side of the battery. We'll connect these two together. Take the orange wire with a black stripe, connect it to the brown wire coming from the operating unit, and then the remaining portion of the brown wire will get routed to our positive battery post. Keep in mind that anything that's secured to the top of the engine will need to have some wiggle room as the engine will move while it's running. To make this three-way connection, We'll use the three-way butt connector provided with our install kit. Now let's go ahead and strip back our wires and connect them. Now we'll take the brown wire from the operating unit, cut off the excess length, strip it back, and add it to the second leg of our three-way connector. And I can take the leftover wire that we cut off, strip it back, and add it to the third leg of the three-way connector. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the top cover so we can gain access to the positive battery post. As we lift off the cover, we can see here the positive battery post terminals. We'll go ahead and prepare and install 
our inline fuse holder. The inline fuse holder comes as a one wire loop that we'll simply just cut in half. We'll strip back both sides, adding a ring terminal to one and a buck connector to the other. Now once we have the fuse holder prepped, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from our power wire and secure it with the buck connector. Now we'll go ahead and remove the nut off of one of the positive battery posts, install the ring terminal, and then re-secure the nut. Then we can put the battery cover back in place. Next, we'll take the blue wire from the breakaway switch and the blue wire from the operating unit, cut off the excess length, strip it back. All right, now that we have our length cut and our wire stripped back, on cases where you have a active brake switch, you will simply connect these two blue wires together. However, since in the tow mode, we do not have an active brake switch, we need to take the red wire that we attach to our two pole connection for the monitor light and make a three-way connection with the two blue wires. Go ahead and remove the excess from the red wire and strip it back. And using the three-way connector provided with our install kit, we'll go ahead and secure these wires together. Now up to this point, we've gone ahead and completed our circuit for our emergency breakaway switch, added power for the operating unit, and completed the circuit for the monitor light. Next, we need to connect to the previously installed towed vehicle wiring, green, yellow, and white, matching color for color that come from our control unit. To make these connections, we're gonna use the quick splice connectors provided with our install kit. So to start, let's go ahead and prep the tow vehicle wiring. Using a utility knife, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the sheathing so I can pull the wires apart. Keep in mind as you make these cuts, not to cut into the insulation that protects the wire. Starting with the green wire that comes from the control unit, and bring it down, cut off the excess. I'll take the quick splice connector, slide it over the green wire, and take the control unit wire, slide it into the connector, and crimp it down. Once we crimp it down, we can close the clasp, and it'll secure the two wires together. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the same procedure for our yellow wire connection. Next, we'll take the white wire from the control unit. We're gonna connect it with the white wire from the towed wiring. Note, we'll also be adding another white wire and running it to ground here in the engine compartment. Let's go ahead and cut to length, strip it back. Now our towed wiring, we're also gonna cut it in half, strip it back. Then on each side of the wiring harness will be two wires connected with a buck connector. So that all four wires will be secured. So we got one half of our towed wiring and our white wire coming from the control unit Twist it together. We'll add a larger buck connector and crimp it down. Then I'm going to repeat the same basic process here on the other side, bringing in my extra length of white wire 
from our install kit. Twist the two together. Slide them into the butt connector. Crimp it down again. Now with all the white wire ground connections made here at our butt connector, we'll go ahead and take the newly installed wire for our ground, follow it around the battery, and over to the driver's side inner fender. Once we get it over to the inner fender, cut off the excess length, strip it back, and add a ring terminal. Now using a self-tapping screw, we'll go ahead and take the ring terminal and ground it to the sheet metal. Note when grounding it, I recommend to find a location where the sheet metal doubles up for a good secured ground. Now that'll complete the circuit for the towed vehicle wiring. We have four wires remaining, two coming from the control unit and two from our operating unit. They're red and black and they'll get connected together color for color. Go ahead and figure out our wire length and then cut it as necessary. Now we'll go ahead and take the vacuum line we routed from the actuator inside here to the engine compartment, over to the operating unit, figure out our length, and then use our tubing cutter, cut off the excess. And once we have it trimmed to length, we'll go ahead and install it into the operating unit by lining it up with the fitting, pressing it in firmly and pulling back to lock it in position. Now we need to take the vacuum hose from the operating unit, route it, and connect in with the manufacturer's vacuum line. This will be the line that comes from the brake booster and goes to the engine. Now for this application, because the manufacturer already has a check valve in line, we will not need to install the one supplied with the install kit. This will not be necessary for this application. Now to connect to the manufacturer's vacuum hose, we'll go ahead and cut it in half. Now once we have the hose cut, we'll go ahead and take the T and install it. And on the other side will be the manufacturer's hose, reconnecting the manufacturer's line. Now we'll take the hose from the operating unit, route it to the T, and cut off any excess. Then we can take our vacuum hose and install it onto the T. Now with everything routed and installed here in the engine compartment, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up our wires with some electrical tape this will help bundle them up to keep them safe, clean up the install look as they route here through the engine compartment. All right, now with everything secured, we'll go ahead and install our 20 amp fuse into the fuse holder. Now with our fuse installed, we're now ready to hook up to our tow vehicle. We'll use the tow vehicle braking system to do the initial setup on our control unit. Now with everything installed, hooked up and set, we're ready to hit the road. 
That'll do it for the review and install of the SMI Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System, part number SM99251 on our 2015 Cadillac SRX.